Is it perhaps possible that buildings are not mere bricks and mortar, that they can somehow carry the dark traces of an unseen world? The Isle of Wight, three miles from mainland Britain, atop a hill in the northern coastal town of Ryde, sits a Victorian building. For decades, residents say they've been terrorized there. Nothing would induce me to go back and live there now. To actually spend the night in the place, I don't really know what we were thinking about, to be honest. I mean, it just frightens the life out of me to think about it. My stomach churns at the thought of what went on there. The building, to me, is alive. It's got evil. And I think there's something buried in there. John and Margaret Oakley moved in to the top floor flat of the converted Victorian house, and at first, nothing suggested the events that would unfold. It was a gradual thing, to be quite honest. The, the, it wasn't really until some major situations occurred that I came to realize there was something not quite right. There's something outside yourself that um, seemed to be there something in the darkness that you can't see and you don't know what it is. We were asleep in the bedroom about two o'clock in the morning It was oppressive. I was paralyzed with fear. I was frightened to put my hand in the bed to put the light on for wondering what I was going to see. It stopped immediately. You flooded the room with light. And it's even greater shock, really, to see that there wasn't anything there, which was even worse, you know, because you can't defend yourself against nothing. After that, I searched that flat. I looked up the chimney, I looked behind everything, and I even went up in the roof, and I couldn't see a thing. I, I don't want to go down that road where those wings came from. That was from a very dark place indeed. I knew after that that the force in that building was evil. The whole atmosphere of the place was so bad, I didn't want to stay. Days later, the Oakleys fled the flat. Some time afterwards, Dean and Georgina Rogers became tenants. I, I, I don't know what they were. I, I don't pretend to know what ghosts are, but they were present in that building. And Georgina believes one, a female presence, began to focus on a particular member of the Rogers family. Everything I did with my son in the flat was being watched by her. It felt like she was present behind me every time I bathed him, every time I dressed him, every time I changed his nappy, every time I fed him. When she entered the room, as soon as she entered the room, whether she opened the door to enter or whether she came through the wall, you would know straight away that she was there. Her, her presence was better felt than the presence of a living person in the room. When Connor would wake in the night and, and cry, um, me and Dean would wait because sometimes she would go to him and shush him back to sleep. And we would, we would actually hear her over the cot. Shh, shh. 
Me and Connor were in the flat one day on our own. And he was playing up. And I lost my temper with him and shouted. Something that she regrets. At that point, I felt threatened and scared that she would have the power to do that. Nevertheless, Georgina felt something far worse lay elsewhere in the house. It seemed that the further you went down in the building, the, the more evil it felt. Ed Payne and his wife were the occupants of the ground floor flat. We thought that we were being looked at not just on the outside, but inside. And it was a terrible, terrible feeling that someone was scrutinizing you all the time, and you couldn't see it. And it was a real deep oppressiveness. When I put my head on the pillow to go to sleep, I heard a banging noise. And it was like it was coming from an inside wall, someone trying to get out. A couple of nights later, put our head down to go to sleep. And all of a sudden, I heard a baby crying. was in our bedroom. And I got up from the bed and I walked to the uh, wardrobe where I thought the noise was coming from. When I neared the wardrobe, the baby stopped crying. I had to open the wardrobe because I just had to find it. When I put my hand on the linen on the left-hand side, the linen was quite warm, as though a baby was lying on it. When I put my hand on the right-hand side, it was normally cold. I knew where the saints were coming from. They were distinctive. Whatever was in there was... <laughs> it's playing games with you. But if something was playing games with him, the games were about to become more terrifying. I went up to the hallway. I saw a black mass. It was though you were being attacked, and I tell you, I was scared. I was frightened to have my wits. It looked evil. Obviously, I couldn't tell my wife. I didn't want to alarm her. It was a few days after that that my wife said to me, Ed, I've got something to tell you. She said, Ed, she said, I'm scared. I saw a black mass, just a few inches from the grain. It just looked evil. I can't go on. I just can't say no more about it because I'm getting upset. Ed's wife died four years later. To this day, he feels her death could be linked to their stay in the house.